Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to, let's call it, Drinking and Thinking with Lincoln. Here in the Temple of Boom with Legally Owned America, I am of course Paul Glasgow with Legally Owned America. We're going to go over a few things. We put out a little bit of a bulletin earlier talking about how um, we were going to go over four specific things. Actually, uh, four things, but three specific things. The fourth one I didn't actually uh, mention what we're going to go over, but I will here in a second. Um, let's get right into it. Um, you know, we are, this is our second, third, no, sorry, third week in a row on a Friday night, 10.30 p.m. Central Time, that we are having our live stream from the Temple of Boom. Um, we'll have some different settings in here. We'll shoot it from different walls occasionally. But tonight we're shooting it from the same wall that we've shot on, I believe, the last uh, two weeks prior to this. Um, a couple things I want to get into and talk about. We're going to, again, we're going to try to do this every Friday night, um, see if the time works for everybody. Uh, 10.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, it's got to be this late for me because I actually have a special needs child that I just put to sleep uh, downstairs. So this is, uh, yay, I'm first to comment. Yes, you are first to comment. Um, this is Alan. Uh, pardon me, guys. I have to get up close and personal whenever I read these comments because I am so blind. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm trying to rig all this up to try to get to where I can uh, interact with my friends out there and at the same time give you guys a quality feed. Um, so glad to see you guys here with us. Um, one of the things I want to kick it off with is let's talk about a video that I put out last week. Kind of an interesting concept that I've been trying to do uh, here lately. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and if you got a cold one, drink it because uh, I'm going to. I've always wanted to find kind of a somewhat, uh, what's up, checking in from Iowa. Was that Iowa the state or Iowa? the city that's right here in Louisiana. Uh, if you're from either one of them, that's great. Uh, I've always wanted to kind of um, measure recall without breaking the bank. You know what I mean? I, I, and, and what I mean by measure recall, I don't mean down to the exact number of it pulls 2.97 G's or, or whatever. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not, I'm not trying to find a definitive number that I can say, all right, that's what that gun recalls at. That's what that gun recalls at. What I'm talking about is two very similar guns. Let's say two, two AR-15s, for instance. You know, maybe I want to have a Colt 6920 next to a Wyndham weaponry, uh, both 5.56 caliber. And, you know, based on the build, based on the muzzle brake, you know, maybe you're testing muzzle brakes out. Uh, things of that nature. There are some uh, recall reduction devices out there. So it's a way to basically gauge it. In other words, ignoring the numbers, but maybe one recoils this much and the other one recoils this much. So I know that this one recoiled more than that one. That's what I'm looking for. Again, the exact number, you know, this is not some kind of scientific study that we're doing. So we know we're not going to drill it down to that. And again, I'm really not interested in the number. I could care less what the number is. I don't care if it says two G's or 200 G's. I don't care if it says two whiz bangs or 1500 whiz bangs. That doesn't matter to me. It's, it's, it's comparing those firearms. I may want to take 10 firearms out there. Anyway, uh, to not get too much into it, good evening, Paul. Good evening. Uh, watch you as much as I can. We're getting a bad, bad storm up here in Pennsylvania. I'm sorry to hear that, guys. We just had a little storm roll through here a minute ago. Um, I, you know, hope you guys, uh, hope, hope it's okay. Hope it's not too bad of a storm where it causes some damage or whatnot up there. But one of the things that I did in trying to uh, figure out how I was going to manage recall, or measure recall, I should say, is I downloaded an app. Now, let me back up real quick because I don't want to, it's called, <laughs> this is going to sound kind of pornographic. It's called Vibe Sensor, V I B. S-E-N-S-O-R. This is the best one I've found. I downloaded one, two, three, four. Um, it, it, it's an accelerometer is what it is. I downloaded four accelerometers until I found this one. And the reason why I like this one is because it had a good visual, but it also allowed me to record my streams and my data collection so that I could see it. I'm going to try to let you guys see this if you can. All right. What this basically is, that's the accelerometer that I'm using. And if you notice, if you go side to side, you see the green uh, balloon, I guess? The green area is measuring side to side. That's your x-axis. Going up and down, 
you'll notice that the red area lights up. That's your Y axis. And if you notice, if I go backwards and forward, see the blue down at the very bottom? <clears throat> that's the Z axis. So that's how it's measuring that. Now, if I want to, uh, uh, let, let me explain what I did. And if you want to go look at one of our videos, you can see. I took an iPad, an iPad mini, a little bit smaller than this, and I Velcroed it to my wrist basically like this if I took the app and put it like that on my wrist and I took a cup uh, a 10 millimeter Rock Island Armory 10 millimeter and I fired it and what I wanted to do is I was able using the accelerometer to measure what my muzzle rise was going to be and also what the recoil coming backwards was too the kind of funny thing was I actually had it on the inside of my arm like this and Callie here Callie's here again Han Solo glad you could join us again huh um, the the iPad didn't wasn't on me perfectly straight up and down like this. It kind of sagged. If I can just demonstrate that, yeah, it wasn't like this. It sagged like this. So it was giving me three three readings: uh, x axis, excuse me, y axis, and a z axis. But anyway, it was still somewhat uh, interesting. So I ordered a different type of brace. That this time it's going to wrap around my hand. So I actually have, instead of being on my wrist here, instead of having the iPad on my wrist, I'll have it on my hand up here. Again, for comparison's sake, is actually pretty interesting. Um, and you've got a couple of different ways that you can do this. If you notice, you can pick if you want a high frequency or a low frequency. Um, in this case, let's say I pick a high frequency and then I start it recording. So I click here, if that worked, and let's say I have recall and it does this. Okay, it's recording that. Stop it, and then I go back to ver uh, view my data, and this is what you see. It's gonna be real tough for you guys to see this, but let me show the raw data readout. Look for the video called Akimbo, or look for my avatar. I will look for that. Um, see if you can see that. Um, I know it's a little bit out of focus, but let me try to get it where you guys can see it. If you notice those jumps on there, um, are definitely, uh, you know, some, some movements that the accelerometer recorded. So what, it, what it's going to do, in essence, is going to show me, um, you know, if one had a greater recall or, or something like that. Now, the key point is going to be, obviously, and I just happen to have some blue guns right here. If I have, um, you know, if I'm holding it with kind of an isosceles stance or something like this, you know, if I'm using my elbows absorb some of that recoil like this well I'm, I'm gonna have to it's gonna be hard to do that because I'm gonna be really inconsistent especially if I'm shooting two different types of guns I may hold one a little bit differently in other words I may give more of a shock absorber like this um, and really not and the next one I'm a little stiffer you know what I mean and, and as the day goes on maybe I, I'm a little loose when I hold it but I'm a little stiffer at the beginning of the day when I'm a little more fresh so what I'm gonna to have to do is probably lock my elbows so that I'm just holding it like this. And I've even thought about it this far, about leaning up against a post so that my upper body doesn't absorb so much of the recoil either. So that if I'm stopped right here and I'm locked right here, then pretty much anything that can happen, it's gonna be obviously give me a little bit more of a feel of that recoil in my arm up to my shoulder, which I won't be shooting a 500 Smith & Wesson doing that. But if I do that, it's going to give more, me more recall because my body's not going to go back, but it should be more accurate, uh, more consistent um, in, in between two different guns. So that's, that's the hope here anyway. So when I would shoot it uh, anyway, it would just basically be like this, and I'd feel the recall coming backwards, but it couldn't go anywhere if I'm leaning up against the post. Anyway, that's just some thoughts that I have. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, I'm wide open to it. I say that in my videos. Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm just kind of a gun nerd and I like looking at things like this. And I like trying to find new ways to discover, you know, new ways to do things out there. And maybe it's something that, uh, you know, somebody else can perfect. Um, I will say, hey, uh, Alien Gamer, if you like gaming, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, anybody that's on here, I don't mind you guys promoting your channels at all. You know, we're all here on YouTube together. And, uh, you know, especially in the gun business, uh, there's some guys out there that have gotten hammered in the gun community because they kind of had all their eggs in one basket. They were making a whole lot of money, and then YouTube and Google decided that they wanted to strip a lot of those advertising dollars from those gun guys. So there, there's guys out there, and you guys know the big names. 
Um, I follow all of them. Uh, the Hickok 45, I follow him. Uh, have you ever shot a gun in a vice that... Uh, I missed it. I missed the rest of your uh, question. Um, Hickok, Iraq veteran, 8888. Um, GY6 videos, a bunch of those guys. You know, these guys are way bigger than we are. We're at a little over 40,000 subscribers, almost 8 million views. That's a drop in the bucket to some of these guys out there. You know, we're, we're happy with our following and we're very comfortable and proud of it, but it's still not where these other guys are. So some recall is often needed for operation. Absolutely, you're right about that. A good point. So these guys went from, some of them went from making 10 or $12,000 a month, a month, to, I, I mean, I'm just guessing here, maybe a thousand, something like that. I mean, it's, 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 it's a fraction of what it was, maybe 2,000. So some of these guys out there that were making big money, hauling in, you know, over a hundred grand a year, just making YouTube videos on guns, you know, they didn't have jobs. That was their job. Now they're looking for jobs because they've lost their form of income. So we're doing a lot of things out there to try to, uh, you know, make things better for a lot of these guys. Um, I will say this, letting you guys promote your own channel on here is one of those things. You know, we're not trying to, you know, be king of the hill or anything like that. We want everybody to be, you know, we all succeed together. And uh, what do they say? You know, when a river rises, everybody rises up with it. That's what we're kind of all about. So feel free guys to promote your channels on here. Don't mind at all. You know, as long as it's not something tacky or whatever, uh, we're wide open. I don't care if it's gaming, you know, gaming, guns, whatever. Uh, we just appreciate you guys checking in with us. Um, Florida, another, uh, we got Cali and Florida represented right now. Pennsylvania too, they're having a storm up there right now. And guys, I hope that works out for you all. Um, the loose grip is a cause for stovepipe stoppage or even failure to feed. Yeah, that's a whole nother video. We could really go into, and we may do that one time, pick a topic like that and really break it down and nail it down and get very, very specific. Um, so that's probably gun malfunctions is a really good one. Actually, I, um, I spoke with Kyle Lamb. Kyle Lamb, uh, through, through email, of course, I, I don't know Kyle Lamb, but through email, he wrote an article for one of the AR-15 magazines, I believe it's AR-15 magazine, and uh, he talked about different malfunctions, and I reached out to him, and I said, hey, look, I'd like to do some videos, or a video, on your article that you wrote for that magazine that talks about all the malfunctions, because it's not my article, I mean, he wrote it, he penned it, and um, he said, yeah, man, do it, just link back to my channel if you do. So uh, we'll be working on that really, really soon. Some really good, really good information on there. Uh, he talks about every possible type of malfunction in, in an AR-15, along with what caused it and the remedy for it. So that's something I'm excited to bring to you guys. That's gonna be pretty in depth though, because I wanna say eight or 10 different uh, scenarios he had. I may be embellishing, I'm not sure, or maybe uh, uh, incorrect on that. So I'll try to find out. And uh, anyway, we're gonna probably start that this winter. Down here in Louisiana, guys, you know, it's on a, on a given day between, say, June and maybe in September sometime. We're talking about 90-something degree temperatures with heat indexes into the, into the 100s. We don't do a ton of filming. I mean, I do some filming, but I'll get out there, I'll film it, and I'll get back. You know, that's the whole the beauty of having the Temple of Boom right here is that we can, we can video in here, and if we need to, just go out and get the B-roll of firing the, the weapons out in the field while it's hot. But come, come fall, winter, and spring, man, we're, we're, out, we're out there all the time. So look to see a lot more videos from us, a lot more frequently uh, putting those videos out to you guys. Next thing I want to talk about, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, there's a guy out there, and I know you guys have heard of him, um, or most likely have heard of him, Lucian Black. He's with Voda Consulting, Voda um, Training, what, whatever. And the guy has multiple companies of similar names. He's got aliases. I don't know why the guy's got so many name aliases. I have one name. Paul Glasgow is my name, and I use it everywhere for everything. I don't need aliases. This guy's got aliases. I don't, I don't get it. St. Louis here. Um, yeah, humidity is, is rough. Um, this guy with Voda, he's, he's the guy that had the oddball, and I put a video out, out about it. He got pissed off about it, and... Um, he wrote an article or a blog or whatever about me saying I was a dumbass or something like that and whatever. Um, this is the guy that was seen with the um, with the knife in his gun and he's he's <laughs> he, he goes to shoot and when he goes to shoot with a perfectly good gun he's shooting at a target and he stabs at the target and then he shoots it 
with a perfectly good gun, perfectly good firing gun, he's trying to teach people and train people that you need to stab at somebody and then you take a shot. If I can shoot somebody and if I'm in a self-defense situation, I don't care about the knife. I'm shooting somebody. Uh, so anyway, this guy, his whole method, he prides himself on, on innovation, that he's being uh, super innovative. You know what? That's great. You can be innovative all you want, but it doesn't mean that you're cutting edge or that you're even effective. It just means you're innovative. I mean, there's a lot of people that come up with new stuff that's really stupid, and this guy has. Well, long story short, in the gun world, he's the joke of the gun world right now. I mean, I haven't seen a guy that got this much attention. I would imagine he his 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 views from his website to his videos, everything has got to be sky high right now at an all-time high for him because there's no way he had this kind of following before because all of the trackers are going out there and looking at him. Well, again, he's kind of a punching bag right now because he's such an idiot, it's easy to make fun of this clown. And you know what, if he wasn't so cocky and arrogant, people probably wouldn't make fun of him. He truly thinks he is <clears throat> the best out there. He thinks that he is making the world a safer place with the people that he trains. Well, there is a, a, a Facebook page that I follow, and it's very funny. If you guys get a chance, check it out. And it's going to be kind of long, but if you search for it on Facebook, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's, it's titled, Gun Grabbing Memes for the Tactical Scene. And I'll try to put this down in the uh, description of the video once we're through live streaming tonight so you guys can see that. But in, again, it's a Facebook group or Facebook uh, page, maybe. Uh, Gun Grabbing Memes for the Tactical Scene. Check it out. Uh, the guys who are managing that page, or the guy who manages that page, um, he, he's, he's funny. The guy puts out some really cool stuff, and a lot of times he's, he's on uh, Jaeger about some stuff because Jaeger had some training uh, videos <laughs> where they talk about um, maybe you shouldn't be training or something like that. If you, have, if you wouldn't be willing to put your girlfriend next to the target that you're actually live firing at, then you probably don't need to be training because you're not that good. I mean, silly stuff like that. So... This guy over at Gun Grabbing Means for the Tactical Scene is making fun of Jaeger and other guys like that that just do, you know, different types of stuff. And I'm not dogging on Jaeger, so if you guys are Jaeger fans, uh, whatever, you know, don't don't come here for that. Um, but he's been ripping on this Voda dude, and uh, I, the Voda guy sent him, and I wish I had it all up right now, but I don't. This morning, I just kind of woke up and I was laying in bed flipping through all my news feeds and all that and I went over to Facebook and was checking it out and I saw where the Lucian Black character has threatened to sue the gun grabbing memes uh, Facebook page for defamation or whatever. It just at First he insisted that the guy take one of his memes down and it's a hilarious meme. I'm not going to say what it is but it's funny. You got to check it out. But uh, he insisted he take it down, gave him 24 hours to do it, which I'm assuming 24 hours is going to be tomorrow morning. So let's see if it's still up there. What about Lucian brandishing a gun in front of the NRA building? That's in essence what the, the gun grabbing memes guy was talking about. He, he, he linked to the video. This guy, this guy, Lucian Black, this clown. If you don't know about him, you got to go check him out. Because, I mean, I can't go into too much of it here. Uh, it's just too much to go over. But one of his most recent videos is him standing in front of the uh, the uh, NRA building in Fairfax, Virginia, standing there with his knife in his left hand and his pistol drawn in his right hand, and he's got some boy his behind him reading off a script, talking about how the NRA is going to respect them, and if the NRA doesn't respect them by their own will, then they're going to they're going to I guess impose their will on the NRA to make them respect them. Very very threatening. Um, in Fairfax, the county, uh, or that, that particular county, it's illegal to brandish a firearm. So the guy's committing a crime standing out in front of the NRA building in public, and that's what this guy, the gun-grabbing memes guy, was picking on. And he was accurate, even though he was sarcastic, he was totally accurate. Now keep in mind, this is a satire page anyway. This is not a news page. They don't claim to be a news page. Their page is there to pick on people. That's it. Make fun of people. So anyway, the Lucian Black guy was pissed off about it, and he's wanting to uh, quote sue uh, these guys and uh, it's, it's interesting to see so much of the support on there from a lot of the members of the page because they're like you know what's he going to do I mean it's a satire page um, yes I will subscribe to your channel um, let me try to lean gamer let me try to write that down and I will catch up with you after uh, after we're done here
I have no problem subscribing to you guys. If you have channels you'd like us to subscribe to, all I ask in return if you guys will subscribe to us. Did you hear the reg pass through at admin law office? No, I did not hear. I don't know what uh, which one you're talking about. If you could try to enlighten us, and if I don't catch it, maybe uh, type it in the comments section in detail. I'd love to you know talk about that. But anyway, the voter guy is. Uh, we're going to see how it plays out tomorrow, if he's uh, going to follow through. But it's it's just you know you watch some of these guys in here talk about. They just act tough on these on these pages and all that. And when you have a guy who is improperly and unsafely training other people and he gets called out on it and then he gets his feelings hurt. Again, I'm not one that likes to normally pile on to somebody whenever they're already getting piled on. This guy deserves it. You know, not because he lashed out at me, because if you look at my video, I mean, I just basically say it was stupid what he did. But uh, I mean, this guy was, apparently I hurt his feelings, uh, sorry. But uh, he's just, he's a clown, you know? And if, it, if he was doing something harmless, like if he was showing somebody the improper way to make potholders or weave baskets or something like that, no one would give him the time of day. But this guy is using actual firearms, not blue guns. He is using pistols, real pistols. Hey, whether we lo they're loaded or not, we don't know. But he's aiming them at some of his, his people in his class. The guy's a nut, I mean, he's a nut. He's doing things that are unsafe I don't know this, but I've read and seen, I've even seen a mug shot of him. I've heard that he shot somebody uh, in one of his classes accidentally. Um, I don't know that for sure, so I'm not stating that. That's simply what I've heard. So yeah, the guy's reckless, man. He's really reckless. He's gonna, if he hasn't gotten somebody killed already, he's, he's probably going to. Um, he's just improperly training people out there. To me, people like that, I've got no problem with people piling on a guy like that because he's He's given good, decent gun owners, and even trainers for that matter, a bad name out there. And, and kind of, he's so loud about it, I don't want everybody to look at him and go, oh, that's what trainers act like. And I'll tell you why he's pissed off at the NRA. The guy had NRA certifications at one time and, and was a member of the NRA. So he paid for his certifications like we all have, and he paid for his membership with the NRA like we all have. And then he was so unsafe that the NRA stripped him of, of his certifications. So now he's pissed off at the NRA, and he had a cute little video of him shooting holes in his own little uh, NRA certificate that he had. And I'm laughing about it going, dude, you paid for that. You're the clown. You're the idiot. You're not proving a point to anybody else except everybody else how much of a stupid idiot you are because you're shooting and destroying something that you paid for. You know, you just mad at the NRA because they saw how stupid you were and the crazy things you were doing. They stripped you your certification. So, oh, and, and of course, the NRA is racist now because the man is a black guy. So, yeah, it's just crazy stuff. Um, trying to keep up with you guys. I apologize if I can't. Uh, let's see, the second thing, or the third thing. <clears throat> man, this is a hot topic here. And I don't want to start a fight amongst us, obviously, here on the channel, on this live stream. But if you conceal carry or open carry, if you carry, period, a handgun, a pistol, do you carry with one in the chamber or do you just carry a loaded magazine? And I know that's a hot topic. That's almost like comparing Glock to 1911. But I'm just curious, you know. <clears throat> there's a lot out there that I've heard people say, and I think this is an asinine comment, I've heard people say that if you don't carry one in the chamber, you shouldn't carry it all. Well, that's just plumb stupid. Because, yes, even if you agree that every gun should be carried ready with one in the chamber, that doesn't mean that the person carrying one without one in the chamber is not making the world a, a safer place. He's got a gun. It's technically loaded. It's just not hot and ready to roll. But if something goes down, say I'm the guy that is addressing some kind of a threat somewhere with my uh, concealed carry firearm. Well, if this guy over here has a pistol and there's not one in the chamber, if I'm engaging the, quote, bad guy, it's nice to have some backup over here. I'm glad that guy is carrying his firearm. I'm not going to be the guy that says, oh, you're just, a, you just as well off carrying a brick rather than a gun with no uh, bullet in the chamber. So, again, you hear the phrase all the time about uh, eating our own. You know, gun guys don't need to eat our own. We can argue amongst ourselves, that's fine, but I don't think we should ever say that a responsible gun owner that doesn't want to carry one in his chamber is a fool and shouldn't have a gun on him because he's not ready to have a gun. It doesn't mean he's not ready all the time. That's just his choice. You know, and I understand you can't pick and choose where something is going to happen. You can never plan, all right, let me go ahead and put one in the chamber because this is where I'm probably going to get jumped or whatever. But you know what? 
I know where I live, and the the lightning likeliness that I'm going to get jumped in some of these neighborhoods where I might live is real slim. But I also know some other neighborhoods that I might drive into, I'm real likely to get jumped there. There's a lot of things that come into play when I drive up into one of these neighborhoods, and it's a very good chance I'm going to get jumped. You can at least kind of plan ahead for something like that. So again, I know you can't predict when you're going to get into a situation like that, but boy, you can sure prepare a little bit. Um, so that's just a different, whole different argument. Uh, we may put a video on, out on that, uh, you know, very, very soon. The trouble with putting a video out like that is that you always have the ones out there that it's like religion to them one way or the other. They don't, they don't see a gray area. So they're not accepting, and, and I'm talking about both sides. I'm not, I'm not talking about just the, the cocky, arrogant guys that say, uh, if you don't have one in the chamber, you shouldn't carry. You know, you've got other guys on the other side that don't carry one in the chamber that don't see the point of the other guys who do carry one in the chamber. So I don't like, I don't like that. I like both these, got, these sides should get along together. So when we put the video together, we're going to have to be really careful because we don't want to alienate one or the other because we want all of those guys in the fold. We feel like all of those guys make the world and our communities a whole lot safer place for us and our families. So we just don't want to make sure that we, we, we're a little bit careful about that when we put that video together. Um, the fourth thing that I have, kind of a uh, special guest tonight. Uh, I'm going to take a little swig of my beer if you guys don't mind. Uh, let's see here. This is our special guest tonight. This is an interesting uh, rifle right here. This right here is a Wyndham Weaponry. It, the actual gun is a 450 Thumper. It actually shoots a 450 Bushmaster round. That's the round right there. That is a that's a big that's a big bullet. This this thing right here, it is a it's going to resemble a 4570. But that is not a 4570. Again, this is the 450 Bushmaster. And let me tell you something, man. This thing will put a hurting on you. I know there's guys out there. And look at the size of that barrel if you can. It's a big round comes out of there. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that want to act tough and act like something doesn't hurt when they shoot it. I'm not one of those guys. Uh, what's up, dude? nerdy libertarian we'll take any libertarians in here uh yeah this is horn of the ammo for uh who just asked let me see here uh, actually i think hornady and remington are the only companies that make 450 bushmaster pretty sure that's the only two companies right now hornady black ammunition it's actually a good round um i like it it's um it's a clean round when you shoot it there's not a whole lot of powder that flies everywhere but uh, yeah, man, this thing right here, it's a, it's a massive barrel. I mean, if you can see the barrel, even on the inside down in here, it's just a huge barrel, uh, which it has to be, because it's such a big bullet. But this thing has a massive recoil to it, massive recoil. And we are gonna do like we were talking about earlier about trying to measure our recoil. We are gonna be doing that very, very soon uh, with this particular gun. I'm trying to figure out a way to do it with this one. Um, I did order, and I came in today, a, um, a uh, Picatinny rail uh, deal. You reload those, my 3030 and my 357 Henry, yeah. <laughs> it packs a punch. Um, I did find a mount that will mount onto my Picatinny rail and it will come out and allow me to put my, uh, my smartphone. I can't do it with the uh, uh, iPad. It, it won't hold something that big, which honestly the recall is probably gonna throw it off anyway. And I'm probably gonna have to strap this thing on there uh, show the side of the box what grain. Happy to do that. Um, it's probably uh, two, 250 grain FTX, if you can see that. I'm trying to get it where you guys can see it. 450 Bushmaster, 250 grain FTX. 25 bucks for 20 of them. Um, but yeah, man, this thing here, it's got a massive amount of recoil. So when I put that mount on it, like I said, the mount should be able to mount, uh, we only have a top Picatinny rail. So I'll be able to put the mount, I'll probably put it closer up to the front so that I can measure the muzzle rise a little bit more accurately, getting closer to the muzzle itself. 
So that's going to probably be pretty fun. I shot 20 of these rounds the other day, trying to sight this in. And uh, let me tell you what, it beat me up. <laughs> it beat me up. I'm not one of these kind of guys that was going to go out there and tell you that I can shoot everything and nothing hurts me. Look, man, when I was 15 years old, I'd brag about things not hurting me. When they hurt now, I tell you they hurt. This thing here will pack a punch. I will not be going out shooting 60 rounds at a time with this thing. But it is so well made. Um, you guys know I'm fans of all the wind and weaponry stuff. I bet a muzzle break would kill the guy standing next to you. Boy, you're right. But it would sure save me. It would save my limbs. In fact, after we get done doing our, uh, our recoil um, uh, review on this particular rifle, I'm probably going to put a muzzle brake on it um, just to see what it does. And I can do the same type of review, like figure out how many Gs uh, were, were in effect or, or taking place whenever I fire it with this regular bird cage on it. Um, and then I can do one with the, uh, with the uh, uh, brake on it and see what that does. Uh, Wind and Weaponry Varmint Exterminator, that's a bad gun. That's a, that's a, that's a, and I mean that in a good way. Uh, Wyndham just makes such good guns. By the way, it's a Vortex Crossfire 2, I think. Yeah, it's a Crossfire 2 uh, optic that I have on here. Uh, Vortex makes good stuff. You know, I, I like the Leupold and the Triticon stuff. That's usually probably some of my favorite. But, man, I tell you what, this, some of these Vortex optics out there, they're making good stuff. Uh, and speaking of optics, SIG makes some great new stuff. You know, SIG is really taking the world by storm, buying all these little companies up and making them their own and trying to perfect their products. So uh, that's probably some of my top optics right now. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of Trigicon. I like Leupold. Uh, I like uh, Vortex for the price, especially on Vortex. <clears throat> um, yeah, good stuff right here. This is a, this is a fun gun. It's, it's really fun to shoot. Um, like somebody said a minute ago, the stock on it, uh, the, it's the Luther, <laughs> I guess, stock. It's a great, it's a, it's a meaty looking stock. As you see, you can adjust the cheek rise on it and you can make a few adjustments here and there to make this thing fit you better when you are shooting. I didn't have a problem shooting it like this. The optic that I have on here, this Vortex, was at the right height for me already. So I liked it. Um, but yeah, man, this is a cool gun. This gun right here, a little bit interesting. Uh, Luth AR, okay, got gotcha. you. Um, it's got some history behind it. So when I do the video, I will actually talk a little bit about the history. Jeff Cooper, if anybody in the gun world, you probably know who uh, Jeff Cooper is. I think he passed away like in 2006, something like that. Jeff Cooper was not a big fan of the 5.56 five, round. He, he felt like it wasn't, um, didn't have the knockdown power, which it's not necessarily made for knockdown power, although I don't want to get shot with it. But um, he wanted something that he could utilize the AR-15 platform with, but he wanted to uh, have something with more knockdown power. He wanted something that he could shoot large game with at somewhat of a distance, 200 yards, so to speak, and he wanted to be able uh, to do all of that, again, on the AR-15 platform. So he, I don't know the exact steps involved, but I think he either encouraged or had something to do with the 450 Bushmaster being developed back in the day by Bushmaster, which I want to say it was either Remington or Hornaday. It was Hornaday. Uh, Hornady that they got involved at the time to help them develop the 450 Bushmaster. Um, so at that point, you know, it, it became a thing, you know, but it kind of went away a little bit. It wasn't real popular, um, probably because of recall. I mean, it beat you up. But it's kind of making a comeback now. I'm seeing a couple of guns out there. I forget who else it is. There's another rifle manufacturer out there that has a 450 Bushmaster AR that they've come out with. I just don't recall who it is. Wyndham actually announced this one at SHOT Show this year, 2017 SHOT Show, and they had a version of it at the NRA show in Atlanta this year, and I was really happy to get my hands on one. They sent me this one about a month ago, so I'm real happy to have this. Um, again, you guys, look out for some videos that we have of this. We're going to be showing how powerful this round is, what kind of knockdown power it has, uh, we'll be doing some pretty cool stuff uh, with this. So uh, I encourage you guys to, to kind of hang out and at some point you will be seeing some cool videos of that. Um, I'll tell you what, guys, we're a little ahead of schedule. I've, I've knocked down a lot of what I wanted to talk about. If you guys have any questions about anything, any of the guns that we have in here, <clears throat> excuse me, I know you're only looking at one wall, but, I mean, we've got some other ones in here also, uh, a couple of walls. And... Um, 
you know, if you got, you want to talk about something, uh, we're, we're sitting here looking at the, I thought this was kind of funny earlier. I ordered some uh, practice guns, some, some training guns. Some of them actually have magazines that drop. But I ordered these for a class that we're about to do, a uh, course on child gun safety, uh, to try to show children the proper and improper way um, if they run across a, a pistol or a firearm of any kind, what they should do. What's my favorite optic? Say that again, Han. Uh, my favorite optic mount. Is that a store or are all those your guns? These are my guns. This is this is my gun room and my studio um, that I'm that I'm shooting all this from. Yeah, every gun in here is mine. Over the years, I've accumulated them. Just kind of a gun nut, gun nerd, and um, I'm the kind of guy that any any time I can waste some money, it's usually wasted on a gun or ammo or something like that. Some of these guns uh, we've done videos on. A lot of these guns we've done videos on. When a blue gun and pink gun love each other very much. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of funny that the uh, the SIG and the 1911 um, were all in blue, and they sent me the Glock in pink. I'm sure that'll piss off some of the Glock guys out there. I didn't ask for it in pink. It just came in pink, so not my doing. Um, but yeah, a lot of these guns we've done videos on. These guys right up here, from the very top, which is an IWI Galil and 308, AK-47, uh, M16, I guess variant, AR-15, 5.56. Uh, the, uh, oh gosh, Springfield Armory, M M14 and 308 also. And then we've got, yeah, we've got the G3 or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's you know, there's a couple of different names for it. Uh, the old HK model of it, also in 308. And of course, the FNFAL made by DS Arms in 308, of course, also the right arm, uh, the right arm of the free world. All these guns right here were 50, 1950s and 1960s <clears throat> in that era of the Cold War. And I've accumulated all these guns because I wanted to, of course, I wanted this one really bad. I, uh, DS Arms makes an amazing, I know you can't really see all of it here, but they make an amazing FNFAL. Um, but I'm putting together a Cold War segment to talk about the different guns. There's actually some interesting here, uh, history behind these guns and how this gun right here, the Americans should have been using it back in the Cold War era. But politics made us have that one. Now, I'm not dogging the M14. Uh, it's a great gun. But if you hold this one and you hold this one, they do not hold, they don't, do not feel the same. There's a distinct difference between them. And because of politics, our guys had to trudge through the jungles carrying this thing rather than carrying something like this back in the late 50s, early 60s, or, or throughout the 60s. So uh, I would be willing to bet that, yeah, a lot of guys love the M14, and I love it as well. But if you handed me both of those rifles and told me I had to go into battle with them, this one's coming with me all day long. It's just, it just is. I mean, it's easier to maneuver with. It's proven. It's reliable. But the tiebreaker is the fact that it's easy to maneuver with. This thing here is bulky. It, it's, it's just a little bit difficult. So to go through the jungle, um, it's a little tough. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a Cold War segment on these rifles all the way up. And uh, it's going to be fun, man. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, again, kind of being somewhat of a gun geek, I like doing stuff like that, talking about things like that. Uh, may not be real important to a lot of people out there, but a lot of people get, you know, a lot of enjoyment out of talking about some of those old historic guns and how they came to be and, you know, what the political fight was and how one, you know, rose to the top. The, the, you know, the, the government, especially in America, the government programs to decide what's the next best firearm, you know, the guys that are making those decisions, are not the guys that have to take that 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 gun out into the field and defend our country with it. So the decision makers are usually not the right people making the decisions. Isn't that the case in politics anyway? But yeah, that's the problem. You know, it gets political. People are getting kickbacks and they're getting tons of things that they shouldn't be getting and they're deciding, trying to make their own legacy, and they're picking guns like this over guns like that. You know, so it's a shame that stuff like that happens and you know you we've got the recent um, uh, military, U.S. military choosing the Glock. I'm sorry, boy, that's gonna that's gonna make the Sig guys mad. The military choosing the six-hour P320 as their new sidearm of choice 
And of course, there's all kinds of stuff going on about that. The Glock guys are mad about it. Glock, the company is mad about it. Uh, they're wanting the military to revisit that. So it's just, it's just interesting that you know, how things happen and how things are chosen. I'm not saying SIG, that the P320 doesn't deserve that, uh, but they definitely, uh, I'm not sure who made that decision. I would love to know more of the politics and the side of it that decided that the P uh, P320 was going to be the gun. Again, I got no problem with the P320. I like them. You know, I've got, I got three and I have one on the way. I have one of the, is it the RX, I believe, that has the RMR site on top of it. Uh, we down here in Louisiana have what they call a Second Amendment holiday, so to speak, and it's usually the end of August, early September, and this year our Second Amendment holiday is going to fall, I want to say September 1st and 2nd, the weekend. So what a lot of us guys in this particular area down here in southwest Louisiana do is, as, as that time gets closer, we'll go to our local gun shops, and again, I stress local gun shops not the academies, not the Dick Sporting Goods, not the Walmarts. I don't buy anything gun related from those guys. I support the, the, uh, the small guys, the mom and pops out there, the brick and mortars that are out there beating the street and making things happen for us guys on the front line instead of these big box guys that are all about the dollar. They could care less about the gun. Uh, anyway, I digress a little bit. Um, but we, start, we go to our local gun shops and we tell them, hey man, put that one aside for me, put that one aside for me, put that one aside for me. Down here in Louisiana, if you get something sales tax free, you're looking at almost 11%. It's 10.7% um, uh, tax here in Louisiana. So you're getting a pretty hefty deal. I mean, let's say you buy a gun for a thousand bucks. You just saved yourself over a hundred dollars on that gun. So right now I've got um, the six hour P320. I think it's the RX. It's the, again, it's the one with the RMR on top. I've got that one on hold. Um, I've got, no, Han, talk all you want, dude. You said sorry for blowing up the thread. Do it, man. That's what we're here for. Um, and I'll try to pay more attention to this. Uh, yeah, the 6 hour P320 with the RMR on it. I also have, and I'm, well, this will show that I'm not a SIG or a Glock guy because I'm, I'm buying one of each. I also have that new um, Glock 19 with the American flag um, pattern drawn onto it with the, or painted onto it, cerakoted onto it with the real distress look, really cool looking gun. It's not like I needed another Glock, but man, when I saw that, I was like, that's cool. You know, that's really cool. Um, so I'm gonna get that one also. That one's on hold. So I have a 320, the P320 and the uh, Glock 19. And I'm not sure, there is a, I uh, have the SIG P229 and 40 and the 357 SIG barrel for when I'm feeling froggy. <laughs> I've got a 226. I actually have the Legion 226. And let me grab it real quick. I'm gonna show you what I did to it. I've got a 226 in here somewhere. Um, let me see if I can find it. I do not see it. Let me find this gun. It's in here somewhere. I can't believe I can't find this gun. It's, oh, here we go. Here we go. I got one of the SIG Legion P226s. Just so y'all know, every gun in here is not loaded, uh, or all guns are unloaded. Um, I got this thing Cerakoted from KM3 Solutions. I want uh, my favorite uh, fighter uh, uh, airplane is the uh, A10 Warthog. So I sent him a picture of a Warthog. This is uh, Chris over at KM3 Solutions. And he Cerakoted this thing for me. See, he's got Legally Armed America on top. And then he's got PG-003 um, on top of the slide also. That is my, uh, this is my third gun that he Cerakoted. So that's why he's got the 003. It's kind of cool. I had him uh, put fuel down here <laughs> where the ammo goes in. Kind of like the airplane where it says fuel. So I've got that on there. The arrows like pointing to that. I mean, just just some coolie, some cool stuff that he's got on here. Um, you know, uh, I, I just like what he did. He did a great job on it. The distress look on it. But that's my 226, and 
again, guys, it's the uh, the Legion. The reason why, and I've had people, oh man, I can't believe uh, you uh, uh, you know you know painted over a Legion. Man, look, when the first Legions came out, I don't know what the deal was. Uh, terrible paint job. The Cerco job was not good. It looked great. Cerco job looked awesome on it, but it was junk. Man, it had uh, <clears throat> uh, discolorations all on top of it. Checking in from Lake City, Florida. So when will the limited edition Legally on America be available? I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is it. <laughs> this, this is the one. Uh, and it's not available right now. But, uh, yeah, man, the, I, I love the pistol. They did some great work on this Legion. It's got the little two or $300 trigger job that uh, the, the custom shop at Six Hour put in it. And just... You know, really, really cool stuff on it. The recall spring is so light on this thing. I mean, it's really, really light. This thing here, it's almost like you got an airsoft gun. It's amazing. But um, I just, the, the, the finish was so bad. I wouldn't say it was rusting, but it was like it was corroding or something like that. I couldn't figure out what it was. Just a bad finish. Um, so I can second his view on the finish. Yeah, man, I don't know what it was on that finish. I, I really don't get it. Uh, it looked great. The finish looked awesome on it, but it didn't last. And we're talking about six months later. And they, because if you're in the, quote, Legion Club, you can send in your serial number, and all of a sudden you're eligible to buy a bunch of kind of overpriced stuff needed in a 10 millimeter. I agree with that. I, every gun should be offered in 10 millimeter, in my opinion. I love that round. Um, but this thing here, they sent you a case when you were part of that Legion Club, so to speak. And the case was kind of a foam case, and I don't think it allowed the pistol to breathe in it. And I think that's what caused the corrosion up and down here, because the way it was sitting in there. Anyway, uh, SIG makes great products. I think that their engineering is great. Uh, they do well. I'm not trying to start a fight between SIG and Glock, because I like Glocks also. I like all pistols. There's not many pistols, there's not many firearm manufacturers out there that I hate. Um, so yeah, that's that's my that's one of my Cerakote jobs from KM3. Um, Check out the Bruno 7.5. Man, that Bruno 7.5, that's a fine looking pig. You're talking about the pistol, I assume. That's the pistol, I believe. I've seen it in magazines. Um, that's an amazing looking, I have I have yet to be able to put my hands on one at a store. I've never seen anybody sell one. I'm assuming it's out. In fact, and they're very expensive too. I don't remember what, they're, what they are, but I'm gonna write this down. Maybe for a tax-free weekend, get my hands on a Bruno 7.5 wrote that down thanks for bringing that up I'd love to get me one save on the taxes on that but yeah they're very pricey I forget what the price of it is because I looked when they first came out I was like holy crap that's that's gonna be expensive but yeah it can kill a mule deer with a pistol round I say pistol round that's probably not really a pistol round it just happens to be in a pistol but uh definitely man it's it's really cool uh, I want to get my hands on one of those. Uh, you'll probably see one, uh, let's just say, within a year. I'd surely like to have one. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Hon, Hon, I think that was you that brought that up. So, the Bruno 7.5, I'll kind of let you guys know as I go if I can get my hands on one. Uh, I've got a gun dealer that's a big sponsor, supporter of our show, and uh, they can pretty much, they're such a huge gun dealer down here that they can get their hands on pretty much anything. So, if it's available, they probably can get their hands on one. Um, you know, again, and I'm talking about a small mom and pop. Again, guys, I don't buy from the big box stores. Uh, I don't have a problem with anybody who works at the big box stores. It's not something personal. It's just that I like to support the small gun shops. And if you can, you know, please support them. You know, you hear people all the time that, that assume that the price is higher if you buy from the mom and pops, that you can get a cheaper price from the academies and all that. That's not true. Down here in Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana, if you go into an academy, and let's say, not that I would go buy one, but if you're looking for Beretta uh, M9, um, have you heard of Gallery of Guns, Lifetime Warranty? I have not heard of that. Uh, I'm not familiar with that at all. Um, but anyway, if you're gonna go buy an M9, you're gonna pay more for one at an academy than if you go to your gun shop. And look, don't go into your local gun shop and try to negotiate on price because that's disrespectful, and most gun shops aren't coming down the price. That's what it's gonna take for them to sell that gun. But in most cases, you're gonna be able to get that gun cheaper than you would at Academy. The thing you get at a local mom and pop that you don't get at your Academies and your Dick Sporting Goods and your Walmarts is that 
you got somebody in most cases, and I know not in all cases, but in most cases, that is somewhat knowledgeable with that pistol, or that firearm, that rifle that you were trying to purchase, somewhat knowledgeable because they're local, they're mom and pop, they're not just hiring every seven and a half year old, uh, seven and a half uh, dollars an hour pimple-headed 14-year-old kid to go work the gun counter or whatever, I don't know. Maybe there's age restrictions on working a gun counter, I don't know. But nevertheless, I have found that you're going to get a way more knowledgeable person. You're going to get somebody that cares more. And if you have an issue with that pistol, that gun of any kind, you're also going to have somebody you can go back to and talk to about that. So definitely support your local mom and pop shops when it comes to firearms, pistols, ammo, all that good stuff. Because again, those guys are going to be the ones you can lean on. And I've developed some great relationships locally with some of the people in this area that are they're selling these guns. You know, um, again, I, I would have to say in my area, I've got you know, there's Gator Guns. Uh, I do a lot of business with Gator Guns. There's Robbins Gunsmithing. Uh, there's Action Arms. And there's, um, oh gosh, the uh, Tackle Place. I just said it a minute ago. Lake Charles Tackle. Um, all those guys um, are down in this area, and it's great. You know, we're, we're a relatively small community down here, and it's nice to have that many mom and pop shops. But they've got the big boxes too. They've got the Dick Sporting Goods, they got the Academies, they got the Walmarts. So you know, <clears throat> again, I, I know I'm going on and on about that, but please keep those guys in mind. Speaking of mom and pop shops, check out Tactical Dash Toolbox on YouTube. He's always doing things for smaller companies. We will check that out. Uh, we'll definitely check that out. That'll be in the comments below. Please don't support gun uh, gouging. Yeah, you're right about that. That gun gouging, you know, after Sandy Hook, a um, couple times when Barack Obama got his panties in a wad, price of guns, ammo, uh, some of those guys are really gouging, man. I mean, you go to some of these um, gun shows, and it was pathetic at the gun shows because in many cases it was some of these mom and pops coming into these areas selling things for especially 22 if you want to get 22 or 223 rounds 556 five, rounds <clears throat> and these guys were selling this stuff for double triple quadruple what they paid for it and what you could go anywhere else and buy it for it's almost like they created a shortage amongst themselves just so that they could sell these things for a ridiculously high price so anyway uh, I have a low little shot, but to take advantage of crisis or customers is garbage. That's right. I mean, anytime we have a crisis, that's when gun guys ought to hang out and stick together. And the fact that some of these, at one time, legitimate gun companies were gouging other people during a crisis, you know, that's BS. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people remember that. If you remember, and I'm not here to pick on cheaper than dirt, but cheaper than dirt, they kind of crapped in their own bed during all that time also. I don't remember what they did. It was probably... Uh, I think it was selling 5.56 five, ammo, and uh, man, they caught a lot of back, backlash on that. A lot of people were boycotting cheaper than dirt. And again, I'm not beating them up because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't shop with them. It's, it's not anything personal. I just, I've never bought anything off their website before. Um, so, uh, but I do remember they caught a lot of heat because they had jacked those prices up, and people were uh, blaming them or accusing them of gouging in a time that you know everything sold. I mean, it's not like you. It's not like you had to gouge on the price. I mean, if you had 10 million rounds of ammo, it was going to get sold. I think the, the ammo manufacturers have finally caught up on that. Um, anyway, uh, I want to talk about real quick about some of our actual sponsors. Uh, I can't I can't go without mentioning them. I'll mention uh, wristwatches. Uh, the wristwatch is by uh, Brazen Sports. Let me show you something that's cool. You know, you got some companies out there that will. They'll find a cause, like a firearm cause, for instance, and say, ooh, I'm gonna be the first one in there, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be a sponsor in the gun community, and I'm gonna tap into that too, but they might also be in the surfing industry, and the skateboard industry, and the pottery industry, and all that, and just spreading out into everything. So sometimes you might wonder, when a company like Brazen comes along, and they say that they want to uh, be a big player in the firearms industry, and you wonder how committed they really are. Let me tell you how committed they really are. When they started out, they're committed to the gun community because if you look on the back of their, their watches, that's a 50 caliber primer. That's, that's an actual 50 caliber primer. That's the cover of the back of their watches. 
So these guys are not anti-gun by any stretch and just trying to stick their feet into the gun community to make a buck off of it. Again, they put 50 caliber primers on the back of their watches. So, uh, yeah, that's why I like these guys. Again, Brazen Sports, uh, you know, follow them on Instagram. I don't know if they're on Facebook or not, but they probably are. Great guys. Eddie, the owner of the company, is a great man. Good, good guy. Down to earth. He's got a bunch of new uh, models that he's coming out with. So good, durable watches. If you're looking for something that's going to hold up. I work in mine, play in mine, I shoot mine, so I, I love them. And actually, one thing that Eddie from Brazen did tell me, I had a couple of the old Luminoxes, and I, a bunch of my bands broke on them, and I couldn't figure out why. You know, it was a little bit aggravating. But Eddie told me that the, uh, the watch bands on Luminoxes are silicone, and that silicone breaks. These are actually rubber, so these aren't going to break like that silicone did over time. Another sponsor, Gallo Technologies. They make all these gray panels that you see in here. Every gray panel, every one of these brackets, these hangers that are on the wall, which there's tons of them. Again, at, at one day, I'll take you guys on a really good um, uh, tour of the room. But, I mean, they make, they make brackets and hangers that hold pistols, rifles, shotguns. You can, they make bins that you can put ammo in. They make uh, these cool-looking uh, AR-15 uh, magazine holders that you can mount on the wall, too. It's amazing what these guys do. It's Brent over at Gallo Technologies. But again, he makes all these gray panels. A huge sponsor of our show. We really appreciate all they've done for us because they have done a lot for us. I don't have any ammo in here, but uh, actually I do. I have a box right here. Empty, empty cases. Armscore Ammo, big sponsor of our show. We appreciate everything Armscore does for us. Uh, they're forever doing things for us. Paul, when is Battle Juice coming to Murphy USA stations? We'll probably sell tons, by the way. We're all jealous of your wall. <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence. Um, actually, Battle Juice, we are in the process of talking to different people about uh, distributing it. Um, we are, Battle Juice is our, our product. Uh, we, we developed this earlier in the year. It's an energy drink. Uh, this is the sugar-free. The red can is the sugar. Uh, same size as a, um, a Red Bull. What we did was, we've got a pretty cool idea, and see it's got our logo and whatnot on it. <clears throat> what we did is we created a can that we can customize. So at some point, you'll be seeing more of these cans out there. And if you notice, it's got uh, a rifle on the back. Wyndham Weapon Reaction makes a rifle for us. That's a legally armed America rifle that we have. And um, <clears throat> we're going to put different guns on here so that, let's say you go to SHOT Show, you might find Rock Island Armory that has, uh, you know, maybe one of their ammo uh, with their new 1911s or something on the side of the can. So each can is going to be technically like a, um, a, a collectible can. Where can I get Battle Juice? You can get Battle Juice right now um, at our website, battlejuiceenergy.com, I believe is the website. Um, you can check that out. I mean, that's one of the places that, best place to go right now. You can order some of it. Um, the shipping is probably going to be a little steep. We apologize for that. But, I mean, it's not cheap to ship cans across the country. Uh, but we do, we sell a lot of it online. A lot of people buy the battle juice online. Um, if you like, you've been using Red Bull for years to help stim, uh, simulate battle stress, <laughs> that tastes almost just like, Red Bull. I mean, you're gonna, you will recognize the uh, the, the taste of, of Battle Juice if you like Red Bull. Um, definitely uh, sell a lot of it, you know. And at some point, we're gonna come out with some water, um, our own uh, type of water. Paul, bring a can or two extra arms and maybe a T-shirt. Yep, I can do that. I can bring some over there. Um, but definitely the Battle Juice. We sell a lot of it. Um, sell more of it outside of Lake Charles. We do sell it down here in southwest Louisiana. Um, you know, we, we sell it in one, two, three stores right now. Uh, but as far as distribution, we're talking with a guy out in North Carolina right now that is working on setting some distribution, a, a network up for us. He's already in distribution of a certain sort. <clears throat> Actually, interestingly enough, uh, DS Arms, Dave, the owner of DS Arms up in Illinois, he actually is the one that has developed a, um, a beer, a gun-themed beer. And it's actually pretty cool. He's got four different flavors of it. And he, he developed his own distribution network, at least in the state of Illinois. So we're trying to work with him and possibly piggyback off of him to have him distribute Battle Juice for us in the state of Illinois. But again, we've got a guy in North Carolina that's starting to work on getting distribution on the East Coast. 
So at some point, you'll see Battle Juice in stores, hopefully everywhere. But man, I tell you what, it's not easy developing a new product, a consumable product like that, and getting it out there. Because I mean, it takes a lot of work, and to get it out there to a bunch of people. Um, guys, if you if you all are not already members of Gun District, that's something else that we have. It's like we legally on America uh, have a, have a ton of stuff. Did you just say Battle Beer? No, we don't have Battle Beer. But DS Arms, the owner of DS Arms, made his own uh, beer uh, brand. And I don't know what it's called, but it's, uh, to my knowledge, it's the only one that's um, uh, gun, gun-themed gun beer. Uh, so check it out. I mean, if you Google guns and beer, you might come across it. <clears throat> but anyway, we at Legally Owned America do a whole lot of stuff. We have our own show, of course. We've got the Battle Juice. Um, we also are working on uh, uh, refining one of our... It's kind of a YouTube clone of a channel where people can upload all their gun videos and whatnot where we won't screw people like YouTube is screwing them right now. So we'll have a place you can go to do all that. We also have our own social community um, where it's called Gun District. Go to gundistrict.com. We've got over 80,000 members on there already. Uh, it's basically a Facebook for gun people. And, you know, we don't... We don't screw with your feed. You know, if you're a company or a club or a group and you post something, everybody sees it. And it's really cool um, that, you know, you've got the ability to go on there and not have somebody like Facebook and their anti-gun sales ratcheting stuff back and, you know, not doing anything properly as far as us gun guys go. You know, they're really, really hammering the gun community. Again, kind of like YouTube is right now with the gun guys out there. So hopefully... We're not going to have that issue. You go to Gun District. Gun District's been up for a couple of years. It's running pretty good right now. We're about to do some tweaks and some changing and some themes and whatnot. But I think you guys will like it. Um, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. We've been on here for over an hour, uh, an hour and two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. This video, of course, is going to be available if you want to watch it later on. <clears throat> Thank you guys for coming and hang out with us. Hopefully we will get together again next Friday night at 10.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And do the same thing um, you know it's funny because these videos we don't have a lot of people viewing online when it's live but they seem to get a lot of views after the, the video itself is completed and uploaded over the next week so hopefully eventually we're going to start having more and more people coming in here and interacting and at some point I'm probably gonna have somebody in here with me that can help read the comments and all that and keep up with it as I'm having trouble doing it you know right here maybe next time I move my monitor closer to the camera so if I'm addressing the camera I can at least see when comments pop up. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us again. I'm Paul with Legally Owned America. Thanks for hanging out with us. Our main website is LegallyOwnedAmerica.com. We put a lot of our videos out there also. So a lot of news and things of that nature. Thanks again for hanging out with us. Thanks again for all of our sponsors for making this happen and allowing us to do this. I uh, appreciate you guys for hanging out with us and please tell everybody you know. Come check us out. Subscribe to us if you're not already subscribed because that helps us get the word out whenever we're going to be coming on live again the next time. Thanks, guys. I am going to tune off from here. See you next time.